Hi, my name is Jan Jungboom and I'm the co-founder and CTO at Edge Impulse. And today I want to talk to you about the work that we've done together with NVIDIA on integrating NVIDIA Tau into Edge Impulse. For Edge Impulse users, this gives you access to the latest research by NVIDIA, including new model architectures like transformers. And for NVIDIA Tau users, Edge Impulse gives you a complete integrated development environment for building Tau models, including data collection, training and validating your model, and most important, actually deployment to any device under the sun, from the smallest microcontrollers to the latest GPUs and neural accelerators. Uh, let's get started by actually building a model. So I have a microcontroller here. And let's go build an NVIDIA Tau model for this. This is actually an Arduino Nikola Vision board. Um, this is everything there is to it. It has a microcontroller and a camera. Just as a comparison to scale, that is a Jetson Nano. Not so Nano anymore if you look at this. So I've connected that to my computer here already, and I can go to my Edge Impulse project. All right, so let's go to data acquisition in my project to collect some data. If you have a fully supported development board like the Nikola Vision, you can just run Edge Impulse Daemon and we connect to your dev board through your computer and we actually give you a little preview here in the camera feed. Um, this actually goes over serial, so it's relatively slow. Um, but it was sitting in front of a computer. My computer has actually four cameras that I can see. You only see me. Um, so I can do this from my computer as well. So let's grab something from a studio display camera. Hello, that's me. And let's build a model that actually can distinguish between me and, well, uh, not me. So let's go Jan, hi. Woo. And let's actually do not me. So let me actually move out of the frame for that. Um, there we go. That's how easy it is to build a new data set in Edgimples. So um, all of the data that we have actually is listed here. So I have some photos of me here. I have some photos of not me uh, in here and I still have the camera feed from my Nikola Vision. So next, let's go put our model together. The model that we have here is relatively straightforward. So we have our image. In this case, we resized it to 24 by 224. Then we have a pre-processing block. Um, here we don't do anything. We just have an image that we pre-process. Um, but you can, for example, put another feature extractor in here, like a post estimation block, if you want to train a classifier on that. Um, and then we can add a learning block. And all the NVIDIA Tau models that you've loaded will actually be available here. So I have two. I have a fully attentive network and a mobile net based network. And this is the one that we're going to pick. But as said, we have access to the full back catalog of all NVIDIA Tau models. Um, I'm picking the, the mobile net V1 model here because I want to run something on a small MCU. And that means I need a relatively small network. Um, let's go to the model and I have a number of options here. So I can set the training cycle, set that to 40. Um, let's lower the learning rate a bit. Um, one. And I can configure the alpha of this model and that has the width of the network. We actually have access to every setting in NVIDIA Tau. I'll show that a little bit after we've deployed. Um, but through this, let's actually hit start training and see what happens. So when you do this, um, you don't need your own GPUs or architecture. We will actually spin up a GPU um, in our cluster, uh, load the NVIDIA Tau containers, combine that with your data uh, and every setting that you have, and then go train that model. But let's uh, give it a few minutes to actually go and do that. All right, so after our model has trained, we also profile this model. Um, we do it in two ways. So on one end, naturally, we look at how well does your model work. We draw a nice visualization, actually using the embeddings of the network. So to show some it's called, um, connections. So we see a cluster of data probably uh, shot in the same location. This is actually in a, in a hotel. So you see that those fit together. Um, but also an on-device performance calibration. So we're targeting the uh, Nikola Vision here, 
And for every model that you train, we will actually tell you the estimated inference time. So we can run this model at about nine frames a second on this MCU um, and the RAM and flash usage uh, through that. Um, okay, so that seems to work. Um, let's go to deployment and try it out. So the lowest common denominator during deployment is a C++ library. So this actually gives you a library with zero external dependencies that you can compile under anything under the sun. And we, sh and we ship hardware acceleration on a very wide range of targets from standard Cortex M microcontrollers to Arc DSPs uh, and you know anything in between. Um, we also ship support for uh, lots of GPUs and NPUs. For example, if you want to target a Renesas target using the RPAI, awesome. Click this button and you get a library out. You want to target ETOS U um, from ARM, click this button. You want to target Memory X, um, click that button and go. Or if you want to run this on your NVIDIA hardware, not a requirement, you can just deploy a TensorRT library. Um, for fully supported development boards, we can also build a binary straight from the studio. So let's actually do that. Let's go to the Arena Nikla Vision um, and click Build to create a binary that combines both our base firmware, so the one that you've uh, seen to uh, collect data, and our ML model. So we can test this out directly on device um, in a little bit once this is built. All right, so once we've uh, built our model, I can uh, Open this up. Let's actually stop the daemon and flash the new firmware to the board. So this is not a requirement. The Edge inference library, as I said, runs on a wide range of boards, also if they're not fully supported. But in that case, you need to do a little bit of integration, like for example, hook up the camera to the inference engine. But that's something that we've done already for the Nikola Vision. So if you run Edge Impulse run impulse dash debug, um, we'll get the results from running the machine learning model on that sensor and we get a little debug window so we can see what the sensor sees. So the sensor sees me. And the sensor does not see me. And sees me again. Um, so here the frame rate is not so great and it's mostly because we need to push the preview image actually um, to us. So if you run in continuous modes, you'll get an indication of like, you know, the nine frames a second basically that we, that we can run at. So integrating this model now into your own firmware is easy. We have a really wide range of kind of integrations in our docs page. So um, we can go here to running your impulse locally, here instructions, running it on your desktop, Nordic semi boards, Thunderbolt Sans, STM32, um, in Arduino sketch if you want to integrate it here, and anything under the sun, including complete instructions on how to integrate it into your firmware. The way that I see this is it's sort of like a driver for a sensor. But rather than get raw sensor values out, you get conclusions out. And you can use that to control actuators, send stuff to the clouds and whatnot if something happens in front of the camera. So um, let's actually take a look at how the Tao integration works in here. So we've been using a Tao model. Um, we've built repositories that map to all of the NVIDIA Tau based repositories. So for example, the uh, image classification PyTorch um, model, we have a repository here called example custom mailbox Tau Py, the same one as we have here. Um, we've done a similar thing for, for example, the TensorFlow 1 image classification models, which is where the MobileNet V1 model is in. Um, so that's here. These repositories are incredibly light. The only thing that they do essentially is convert a data set. So that's a set process that always happens in the same way. So you can just take that as is and then write out this specs file. So let's take a look at that. Um, so the specs file here actually writes a MobileNet V1 model out. We can set the layers, uh, batch normalization, whatnot, image size. We determine that automatically based on your data set. Um, but also, for example, the learning rate. So here we have it as a parameter. 
So as you can see earlier in the UI, you can set the learning rate from there. We write that to the config file here. Um, so if you want to say, hey, actually want to change the regularizer here in the UI, um, you can add that here. So essentially what we do is just convert the data set and write the specs file out. And that's everything there is to it. So if you want to take any of these other models that are in this container, right? You want to use uh, efficient net. Awesome, just write a specs file specifically for that. Um, if you want to add new parameters to the UI, you can go to the parameters of JSON file and spec that out. So here with training cycles, learning rates and the alpha of the model. And when you're ready, just run edge impulse blocks push. It's a CLI command and that's all there is to it. Now that model is available in edge impulse. So with our tau model in Edge Impulse, we can now also start do using some of the more advanced features in Edge Impulse, like the Eon Tuner, which is our AutoML pipeline that helps you find the most optimal neural network architecture, actually combination of pre-processing blocks and neural network architecture, um, that fits the constraints of your application. So here I've said, I want to target the Arduino Nikola Vision, Cortex-M7, right? And my target is that I want to run this in under 75 milliseconds. So the model that we just trained won't actually work there. Um, and now we can plot a combination of mobile net architectures, alphas, learning rates, and whatnot against each other. So for example, I can see that we found a model that actually scores 100% in our validation set, but it doesn't fit our latency and RAM target. Um, but I, we also find a second model that is 96% accurate in our validation set. So a little bit of a drop in accuracy but is a lot more efficient and actually does fit our latency targets very nicely. This will probably run 30 frames a second on this target um, and does the same with RAM. So plotting all of that together, you know, here, the reason why this difference is actually, if we scale down to 64 by 64 pixels, we actually lose only a little bit of accuracy. So that's probably an optimization that we might want to take. We never make the decision for you. That's something that you can do and do informed. You can also do this with uh, the wider tile catalog. So you might be able to plot MobileNet v1 against MobileNet v2, against ResNet, against uh, one of the fan models to see what gives you both this combination of the highest accuracy within the constraints of your device. Um, second, you'll have access to some of our data labeling tools. So the Data Explorer actually gives you a one view overview of all the data in your data set. And the way that we do the visualization is through uh, using the embeddings of the network. Um, so we plot the embeddings of every data sample. So we throw that first through a neural network, but not all the way through. And then we plot that into a 2D space. Um, so interesting stuff is that stuff will be clustered according to similarity. So we added some unlabeled data and you can see that's very close to this cluster of data. So if you click on it, um, that's me again. Uh, and it's very close to the data that we collected earlier in this video. Um, and because it's so far into this cluster, I the only th way that I need to label this is just select that, say that is all Jan, and awesome, now we've labeled all of our unlabeled data. This is incredibly useful if you have an active learning pipeline where you get new data all the time, because you can use a really large model, the embeddings from that, to actually help you label this data um, as it comes in. Um, and last, if you want to build an object detection model, there's lots of object detection and segmentation models in Tao as well. Um, we can help you with the labeling of that. So here's a bunch of photos of my desk um, with a coffee cup and a mouse. And going to draw bounding boxes around this like that is going to be incredibly tedious. So we can use our segment, segment anything based interface. And here we actually find create segmentation maps automatically and find these objects. So the only thing you need to do is actually say, hey, this is a mouse, or uh, actually this is a cup, sorry. Um, this is a mouse, and that is also a mouse, and that is a cup, and we continue that a little bit. Let's find all the ones that have really clear images here, the cup again, also a cup. Well, you basically get the idea. Um, and once we've uh, selected all these ones, we save samples. And now we have a completely 100% accurately labeled data set. Super amazing, right?
All right, and then last, if you've already trained a model in Tau V5 and you don't want to go retrain that in a Gimples, you just want to use a Gimples to deploy to, you know, any device under the sun, that's possible too. Um, create a new project, click upload your model, and then select the Tau model, the Onyx file that you now get out in uh, Tau V5. Um, select where you want to run that either a range of device types to get an indication of whether it's going to run on MCU, NPU, or GPU, and what you sort of need. Um, optionally, a set of representative features. So we'll actually quantize that model for you. Um, and after you've done that, you actually have access to the complete data set, or actually complete access to the deployment pipeline in Edge Impulse. All right, that is all there is to it. Um, I'm super excited, uh, been great working with NVIDIA on this. NVIDIA Tau V5 is really great because it has access to a whole range of ML architectures that are not in the Gimples today, including some of the latest research, right? Like uh, any transformer models. On top of that, there's actually a wide range of transfer learning weights in here. So if you don't want to train a model from scratch, which I think most people would actually not want to do. Um, it requires a lot of data. You can actually use transfer learning on any of these models to get them to work. Together with Edge Impulse, um, that I think is a really awesome combination because Edge Impulse gives you all the, tool, all the other tools that you need. Data collection, uh, running pre-processing of data somewhere in there, chaining models together, and of course the deployment pipeline. Um, this combination actually allows you not to deploy just an NVIDIA hardware anymore like it was with previous tile versions. You can actually deploy to any of the devices that are supported in a Gimples, um, from the smallest microcontrollers to the latest GPUs and uh, neural accelerators. So would love to get some feedback on what you tried out. Uh, click the link below to get started. And uh, I want to thank you for paying attention.